Hey, I'm Rob Witcher from Destination Certification, and I'm here to help you pass the CCSP exam. In this video, we'll review the major cloud data lifecycle topics in Domain 2. We'll show you the connections between each of them to show you how they interrelate and to guide your studies. This is the first of five videos for Domain 2. I've included links to the other mind map videos in the description below. These mind maps are a small part of our complete CCSP masterclass. Moving to the cloud isn't easy from a security perspective. If you're taking some data that was safely ensconced within an application deep in your internal network, and you're moving it to the cloud, such as into a SaaS application in the public cloud, then suddenly a lot of the controls that you used to have in place to protect the data may no longer exist or be relevant. You may no longer have the same defense in depth that you used to. You may now need to rely on different controls to a greater degree. So how do you go about figuring this out? Well, one good way to go about this is to have a data centric view. In other words, think carefully about the data you're moving to the cloud and think about how you should protect that data in the cloud throughout its life cycle. How will you protect the data when it's newly created, when it's stored, used by employees, potentially shared with others, etc. Focusing on the data throughout its life cycle is a good way of thinking through all the controls that you should have in place to protect it. So that's why we're going to take a few minutes here to talk through the cloud data lifecycle and the six phases it defines. This is an important topic. Make sure you know the six phases I'm about to walk through. Create, store, use, share, archive, and destroy. Let's start with create. It's the first phase of the data lifecycle, and it's focused on the generation and creation of new data, as well as the alteration, updating, or modification of existing data. Remember that last part. The create phase covers not only creating new data, but also existing data that has been modified. As soon as you create some new data or modified some existing data, you're gonna to have to store the data somewhere, which brings us to phase two, store. The store phase is focused on committing data to some sort of storage repository. Important considerations related to storage include encrypting, encrypting the data, data redundancy, scalability and availability, to ensure the data is securely and reliably accessible. Phase three is use. This is where the data is actively accessed and used by applications or users. This involves reading, updating, and processing data. Remember, when changes are saved, that brings us back to the create phase. Phase four is share. It focuses on sharing data between users, applications, or systems, potentially across different cloud environments and with various partners, contractors, etc. Sharing involves various data formats and access permissions. Phase five is archive, which is focused on when data leaves active use and enters long-term storage. Certain data may need to be retained for a long period of time, and major cost savings can be achieved by moving data to much slower and cheaper storage solutions into the cloud. The final phase is destroy. When data is no longer needed, it is securely deleted or destroyed to ensure it cannot be recovered. Properly destroying data can be important to ensure compliance with privacy and regulatory requirements. Some regulations require that you defensively destroy data. Here's a nice visual summary of the cloud data lifecycle, and I wanna point out one more critical requirement here. Data must be properly classified when it's created. Classification defines how valuable data is to an organization and what controls are cost justified. Therefore, the classification will derive the requirements for all the subsequent phases of the data lifecycle. The classification derives the requirements for the storage phase, whether data needs to be encrypted, replicated, etc. The classification will derive who can use the data and for what purposes during the use phase. The classification will derive who the data can be shared with and with what security controls like DRM, etc. The classification defines whether data needs to be archived and if so, for how long. Finally, the classification drives whether data is, or whether there's a defensible data destruction requirement, whether data must be securely and provably destroyed. So classification is super important. Data needs to be properly classified when it's created. All right, let's now move on to another important topic related to data protection, roles. Who is accountable and who is responsible for what? 
starting with the data owner or data controller. These terms are used interchangeably. It's very, very important that the data owner is accountable for the protection of data. Remember, accountability can never be delegated. The data owner will set the requirements for protecting the data, and then the owner can delegate various responsibilities to the following roles. Data processes are responsible for processing data on behalf of the owner or controller. The data processor is typically the cloud service provider. Data custodians have a technical responsibility for data. Data custodians ensure that the requisite controls are in place to protect data in the cloud, confidentiality, availability, integrity, and whether there's sufficient capacity, redundancy, whether data is backed up, etc. This is a technical responsibility for the data. It's worth noting here that if an organization moves data to the cloud, the job for any in-house data custodians is going to get a lot harder. Data custodians are expected to have a full and comprehensive knowledge of the internal design and architecture of their data systems. It's going to be very challenging if the data has been moved to the public cloud, especially if it's like a SaaS solution or a SaaS application because your in-house data custodian is going to have no idea how the data is actually being stored, thus making their job very challenging. Data stewards have a, keyword here, business responsibility for data. Data stewards typically work for the business, so they understand the business context of the data, how the data is used by the business, what constitutes good quality data, what, if any, governance or compliance requirements exist for the data. This is all business responsibility. A data subject is the individual to whom personal data relates. In other words, if an organization collected my personal data, I would be the data subject. It's my personal data. Okay, final section of this mind map, controlling access. In all honesty, this is not super important, but these items are in the exam outline and in the CSA guidance, so it's worth covering them here briefly. Here's the idea. In order to properly control access to data, Think about actors, which are the subjects, the people or the process that want to access the data. Functions are what they do with the data. Can they delete the data, modify it, access it? And the third and final part is locations. You can contemplate both where the data is physically stored, located, and also where it is being accessed from by the actors. It's about the locations of the data and the actors. Next, you identify what is technically possible. Is it possible? Is it technically possible for this actor to access this data from these locations? You think through all the possible permutations of what is possible and you create a table of these possibilities. And then finally, you review what is possible and decide what should be permissible, what should be allowed. And then you implement controls to restrict a list of possible actions down to the allowed or permitted actions. And that's how this is a technique that's used for protecting data. And there you go, that's an overview of the cloud data lifecycle in domain two, covering the most critical concepts you need to know for the exam.